I want to bring in right now Martin Feldstein, a former Reagan economic advisor and a former economic senior advisor to the Jeb Bush presidential campaign. Marty, it is great to see you. Good to see you again. So how important is this deficit issue and the fact that our entitlements are, are going broke? And are you think it's, it's going to be a priority for the next president? <clears throat> well, it is very important. You know, you said $600 billion, and that's the official number. That's $2,000 per person. $2,000 per person. Mm -hmm. Family of four, that's $8,000. That's not the debt. That's the increased debt this year alone. That's the extra amount that the government is borrowing. You mm -hmm. can't go on like that. And the only way to deal with it is to slow the growth of the entitlements. We're on a path in which defense spending is going to go down to the lowest share of GDP we've had since World War II. The same is going to be true for the non-defense annually appropriated uh, spending. So two and a half percent of GDP. So we're not going to solve this problem by going after either defense or all the myriad of little annually appropriated programs. It or has to like be, an infrastructure program. Well, if we infrastructure program is going to be more spending. Right. And, you know, the Fed has sort of made it look like this is all very easy because interest rates are so low, there's, the bond vigilantes are gone and there's no pushback. So, Marty, with, with this 19 or 20 trillion dollars in debt, yet the, per, the percentage that the government's paying on that debt is at historically low levels. If we got growth, which caused the, the Fed to raise interest rates, wouldn't, wouldn't that kind of really compound this problem? Oh, it certainly would. It certainly will. I mean, the Congressional Budget Office thinks we're going to go back to, quote, normal uh, interest rates. But with the kind of debt that we have and the kind of borrowing that's going on, I don't see why interest rates won't be higher in the future in real terms than they have been historically. But isn't growth really what we would want to, like, under normal circumstances, if you wanted to pay down, reduce the deficit, you'd want growth, right? But in this case... Yeah, the only way to reduce the deficit is to either raise taxes or cut spending. So you can reduce the size of the debt relative to GDP, but the real change has to come from changing uh, the amount of borrowing that we do. How do you characterize the economy right now? The U.S. economy is in good shape, actually, despite all this. There's more uncertainty, there's more to worry about, but I would say we're in good shape. And the main thing I keep looking at is what's happening to labor markets and to personal income and to spending. And you see households are continuing to increase their spending. Hmm. Marty, we've been, we were deba we've been debating it all morning long about tr Donald Trump's infrastructure plan, which seems to fly in the face of what conservatives have preached. He's going to double Hillary Clinton's infrastructure um, spend, which would be at least half a trillion dollars that he would plan to spend just over five years. And you know, he tried to explain how he would fund it, talking to Stuart Varney, that he would have an infrastructure fund that that, it, that individuals would invest in, but that's still government <laughs> borrowing, is it not? And it, does it, how do you feel about that in terms of uh, we don't need your conservative bent? We don't need an infrastructure program to stimulate the economy. There may be a lot of infrastructure that uh, would benefit from new spending, but if we do that, then we have to deal with the out-year deficits. So any plan that I would like, any plan that a conservative economist would like, would have to combine whatever spending we do in the short run with plans to slow the growth of entitlements so that the long-term debt uh, isn't on the kind of wild, ra rising path uh, that uh, the Congressional Budget Office is, is warning us about. Look, you say the economy is doing okay and, and we're, we are growing, and yet the Bank of England this morning cut interest rates. First time that's happened since 2009. It's we, not our economy. I know, but we know that business leaders in the U.S. are not investing. They're not, we, we see that from the factory orders report, we yeah, see that from durable right. goods, and we know that we're, we're looking at a horrible GDP story. So, what gives? I mean... So two things. If, if you think about the profits that companies are making, the profits are really looking very poor. 
no Down higher. two and a half percent year over and year. No, yeah, that's right. And back to where they were in 2012. So you don't blame uh, businesses for not investing in an environment where there's great uncertainty about the policies that we're going to have after the election and where the um, uh, profits are down, uh, capacity utilization hasn't gone up. So that's not too surprising. But to me, the key thing to look at is what's happening in the labor market. We'll get another number on Friday. But I think there's every reason to think we're going to continue to have pretty tight uh, labor markets. The GDP number, um, you know, I've been doing a lot of work on how the official GDP numbers are created. And you don't want to know. It's really, <laughs> <laughs> it's really uh, they don't know how to capture. It's too hard. They don't know how to capture what's happening to the quality of products. They don't know how to capture the benefits of new products. And so we're underestimating the growth of real GDP. That's not to say that it wouldn't be nicer to have uh, official GDP growing at 3% rather than 1%. Hmm. Marty, if you have a lot of experience uh, in this field. And if I had told you 10 years ago that you'd have negative interest rates around the world and, or close to zero interest rates here in the U.S., you would definitely not have said, and the stock market will be at historical all-time highs. How do, how do we, how do we well, balance I that? Mean, Something has to give. Yes, I agree with that. Something has to give. But the stock market is boosted by these very low interest rates. So we've got, in all asset classes, we've got investors reaching for yield. So whether it's the stock market, the, the price earnings ratio for the S&P is now about 55% higher than its historic average, 55% okay. higher. Uh, commercial real estate cap rates are extremely low, and the bonds themselves are uh, priced in a way that suggests we're going to keep these low interest rates forever. I don't believe that. So I think we're, we're building up risks that could create some serious problems. All right, we will leave it there. Marty, great to see you. Good to see you. Thank you so much Good for joining us. Martin Feldstein, 